Well, good morning, everyone. Thomas Montgomery here. We get together with our distribution partners most weekday mornings at this time, 8 o'clock Central, to discuss strategies, tips, techniques, share success stories, and to support each of you. We have a really interesting topic today, and, and I hope that you'll uh, find it uh, as such as, as well. We're going to take a bit of a contrarian approach today and focus on turndown. And in fact, we're going to speak so strongly about it that this is probably one of the best, if not the best way for you to make a lot of money by using a contrarian approach. So when we say contrarian, what we're essentially meaning is do something that others don't do. Nothing wrong, nothing inappropriate, of course, but just take a different approach, almost an opposite approach. So there's three steps to this that we're going to go through this morning. At any time you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and post it in the Q&A of Zoom. It's kind of like a chat box and we'll address it together. So the first step we believe is you need to be crystal clear on knowing what you do. If this isn't clear to you, the other steps won't matter and they won't work. So we need to know what you do slash what we do. Well, what you do and what we do together is we help individuals and small business owners improve their credibility to qualify for financing. And that financing could be business loans, which is often what we work with, but it also could be they need other things, auto financing, mortgages, et cetera. So at the highest level, what do you and I do as technical advisors? We help people become credible enough for financing. Now let's dig in a little bit deeper. Specifically, we use the credit and funding program. And with that, we can help anyone, anyone, anyone access a minimum of 100,000 by improving their three Cs, credit, collateral, and capacity. This is an important sentence. And again, this is all part of knowing what it is that we do. So at a high level, we help people improve their credibility to get qualified for financing. That sounds good, but that's not descriptive enough to really to, to communicate what it is we do and how we do it. Well, the program that we use is called the Credit and Funding Program, and each of you should have a landing page that has that information on it. The end result is we help anyone access a minimum of 100,000, that's guaranteed. And why that's possible is because we help them improve their three Cs. Well, what are the three Cs? Credit, collateral, and capacity. So in these two sentences, there's just a ton of content and messaging that is important for you to understand what it is that you do and how we do it. The next sentence I almost feel shouldn't even be necessary, but there are some inappropriate and illegal players in the marketplace. So we're going to go ahead and further define what we do to, by explaining that what we do is, is proven. You know, it does do what it says that it'll do. It's legal, and we'll even talk more about that at a whole nother layer, and certainly effective. So with that being said, you'd have to be financially illiterate to suggest, well, no, I, I don't think that could work. I, I don't think that there's any way that better credit and better collateral and better capacity, um, I, I don't see how that would help people get funding. Well, I mean, that, that's an absurd statement. That's, that's a statement of, of ignorance or foolishness. So what we do is not too good to be true. It, it's not some smoke and mirrors. It's not a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. This is what we do. Now, from a legal perspective, uh, we went ahead and added some additional um, disclaimer. So not only do we have attorneys who have helped us with our program design, which is obviously true, we've actually had our program reviewed by the Federal Trade Commission, and they head up kind of the, the civil, the, the lead civil regulatory agency, 
and the U.S. Attorney General's Office, which heads up the, civil, the criminal side, both have found our program to be 100% legal and compliant. So let's just recap step one, because it's very important that we assimilate this. This, If you don't understand this and absorb this, you probably won't be successful as a distribution partner, regardless if you're an affiliate or a white label. So what do we do? We help people improve their credibility to qualify for financing, regardless of the type of financing. We have a credit and funding program, which is the vehicle that we use. The outcome is we guarantee in writing anyone a minimum of 100,000. Oh, that sounds too good to be true. Just the opposite. What do we do? We help them improve their three C's, credit, collateral, and capacity. Everybody with me so far in step one? Any questions or concerns? Because if step one doesn't sit well with you, nothing else that we're going to talk about today matters. Because that's the core. That's the foundation. Knowing what it is that you slash we do together. Are we all good there? Okay. Now, so... I don't know that that is necessarily a contrarian approach. I think it's different. I think we have a strategic advantage in the marketplace of how we approach it, how we package it, how we price it. But now we're going to start to get contrarian. Now we're going to look at what makes us vastly different, vastly different. And that is our target audience. So let's scroll up. We love to work with imperfect people. We work with broke people. Oops, there we go. Broke people, people with bad credit, people without collateral. So how does that tie back? Well, we work with people that have issues with their three C's. Because the truth is, if someone doesn't have any issues with their three C's, they probably don't need you and I. They probably don't need the credit and funding program. We're here to help the imperfect people become credible enough on paper that they can get the financing that they want, that they need. And we guarantee a minimum of 100,000. So this is, is a dramatic contrarian aspect of what we do. We're looking to help, pe help the people that are normally not helped otherwise. These are often the people that are filtered out and in not even offered assistance elsewhere or can't be assisted because they're not credible enough. So that leads us into our discussion for the focus on turndowns. Any questions so far on who we are, what we do, and our target audience? Now, and Timothy's asking, that's true. So we certainly can work, and we do work with some people that are not so imperfect. Their, their credit's okay, their collateral's okay, and their capacity's okay, and that, that's fine. And, and that's probably five out of 10, I'm sorry, about five out of 100 of, of our clients. But it's also probably about five out of 100 in our overall population of, of our nation. Most people don't have all the credibility factors that they need. That's why you and I exist. That's why our relationship exists, is to help people with that. All right, so we've covered knowing who we are and our target audience. Now we're going to apply that and, and get to the point of turndowns. Okay, so let's scroll down to the rest of the page. So on step three, what we want to do is monetize your solution to other people's problems. I mean, that, that's, that's probably textbook 101. How do you become rich? How do you become wealthy? How do you make a lot of money? You have some solution to other people's problems that, aren't re that isn't readily available. And so from that, you get them what they want and you get what you want. So it doesn't matter if you're an affiliate or a white label partner in, in the context of this discussion. You can earn a great income by solving other people's problems, access to funding. And again, how do we do that? By improving their credibility. Now let's pause there for a moment. I understand that there are, there are other resources in the marketplace to provide access to funding. 
let's put them just generally into three groups. You have lenders, everything from banks and credit unions and, and equipment financing companies, merchant cash advance. But there, there's, there's the, the lenders. Secondly, you have the lender brokers, the loan brokers, the MCA brokers, those that facilitate it. And then thirdly, we'll, we'll call the third group the advisors. Like uh, I used to work for the SBA. Technically, I work for the Small Business Development Center, SBDC, which falls under SBA funding, and they have offices all across the country and advisors that work with small business owners. So there's essentially three categories of parties that we need to be cognizant of, and we're going to go through and talk about how we might be able to work with any or all of them to fill your funnel, to get them what they need, to get their clients what they need, and make a shitload of money for you. Okay, so we're, we're going to go ahead and have a disclaimer. You're not going to make any money if you aren't helping people. So signing up as an affiliate and doing nothing will probably get you nothing. Signing up as a white label partner and doing nothing will probably get you nothing, but that's true just about everything in life. So what we need to do is figure out how to fill the sales funnel. So we, we have four strategies here we're going to talk about, and, and they're interrelated and somewhat overlapping, but let's break them down. As the title said for today's topic, focus on turndown. So what we mean by that is to obtain referrals from others who help clients with funding, but they have some people that they can't get approved. So that's what a turndown is. A turndown is a prospect that tried to go get a business loan, a line of credit, a merchant cash advance, whatever type of funding, doesn't matter, but they were told no. They were told no. So there are others that are in the funding space, they don't do this package that we do. They, they probably don't guarantee certain amounts of funding because frankly, the regulators don't like that. So it has to be structured in a certain way to, to pass muster. They probably don't help people with all three of the three C's. But there certainly are others involved in the funding space. So if you see them as your competitors, that is your first mistake. They are not your competitors. They are your lead sources because what you want from them are the people that they can't get approved. So let's talk more about that. If you don't know where to find loan brokers or MCA uh, agents or what have you, you, know, you, you can do internet searches and find them, Craigslist, they post ads, so forth. And, and I gave you some examples. So th these are not folks that are hard to find because they're out shaking the bushes, trying to get clients. They are not our competition. They are not our competition. Now, they may think they are until you educate them, but we don't want to take from them anything. We want to add to them. So what I mean by that is we need to educate them on how the credit and funding program works. If you're not clear on how the credit and funding program works, we need to do two things. Get you back to your landing page that describes it, and again, we essentially, in a roundabout way, describe it here in step one. All right, and so then what we want to do is ask for them to refer to you their turndowns. Again, that's their prospects slash clients who didn't qualify. So it's a loan broker that they had Joe come to them. Joe wanted a loan, and the loan broker said, ah, damn it, Joe, we can't find anywhere to get you funding. You didn't qualify. Because that's a bummer for the client, in this example, Joe. That's a bummer for the loan broker in this hypothetical example. But you and I provide a solution to that problem. Let's let that loan broker refer those people to you as an affiliate or white label partner, doesn't matter. And so what are, we, what are you and I going to do? We're going to get those individuals credible so they can get funding. And, and you see this, this is in bold and highlighted in yellow. We're going to refer them back to the referral source for funding. So let's say it's Eddie, the loan broker. 
and you contact Eddie, the loan broker, and you ask Eddie, hey, Eddie, I, I see that you offer access to funding for small businesses. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Eddie, do you ever have anyone that comes to you that doesn't get approved? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, how often does that happen? How, how many turndowns do you have per month on average, Eddie? And then you want Eddie to respond with the number. And, and if it's a very small number, and if Eddie comes back and says, oh, you know, it's one every three months, then Eddie is irrelevant to you. He's operating on such a small scale, I wouldn't spend a lot of time with Eddie. But if Eddie has some volume and he refers, yeah, I have three or five a month or five or seven or, or, or whatever that number is that warrants enough attention, now then you want to educate Eddie the loan broker of how he can refer people to you, get them in the credit and funding program, we get them credible, and we send them back to Eddie for the funding. Eddie didn't lose the deal. Eddie actually gets paid because he becomes your sub-affiliate or referral partner, however you want to set him up. And Eddie still gets the funding deal because we are not competing with loan brokers. We are not competing with loan brokers. We're not. Because... If Eddie, if the client is with Eddie, Eddie, the loan broker, Eddie, the loan broker refers them to you. We get them all spruced up. We improve their three C's so that now they qualify for at least a hundred thousand, right? That's the promise. If Eddie wants to facilitate that funding, that's fine. And everyone still wins because it still counts as funding under the credit and funding program. You still get paid normal. Eddie still gets paid normal. Plus Eddie gets paid for Marmot. Make sense? So the first of four ways to fill your sales funnel is to get turndowns from others. Any questions on that before we move on? This is huge, huge. Okay, let's move on to the next strategy. This is slightly different. So now we're not going to loan brokers or lending facilitators, we're going to influencers or advisors. And so these could be individuals such as SCORE mentors, SBDC, SBA advisors, economic development corporations, accountants, consultants, uh, bankers, I know could fall into either category. But, but these are influencers that are involved with working with small businesses to help them in different ways and, and possibly even directly helping prepare them for funding. So let's talk, well, I, I used to be a SCORE mentor and I used to be an SBA advisor. So let's talk about each of those for a moment. So SCORE, and you can look it up, I think it's SCORE.org, is also partially supported by the SBA, but SCORE is a different animal. SCORE it is a nonprofit organization composed of volunteers who work with small business owners on a variety of topics, but, but including helping them get prepared for funding. So again, if you say, well, oh, shit, then they're a competitor of ours. Absolutely not. So I've been involved with SCORE in Dallas-Fort Worth, of which I was the workshop chair for a 14-county area. And then when I worked to, went to work for the SBA slash SBDC, I was assigned to work with SCORE as well. So that was in a different geographical area. So SCORE might look different and act different in your community. That, that's fine. But the bottom line that you need to understand is that SCORE, while well-intended, is staffed by volunteers, and they often have people that come to them that are not credible for funding because of some issue with the three C's. I can promise you in most cases, the SCORE mentors who are good, smart, successful people, not saying anything negative, they don't have a package of resources like you can provide. They don't have a credit and funding program that they could refer these individuals to that's going to get them credible enough in their three C's to get at least 100,000. So am I saying that every score, it's called a chapter, every score chapter, every score group, every score mentor is going to be excited to refer to you? No. 
a lot of times they'll be ignorant of the fact of even what you and I do and how it works because they just don't have the background you and I do. But it's a they're great influencers to uh, to interface with and offer. So that's SCORE. SBDC, as I mentioned, and Small Business Development Centers, I think the website is America's SBDC. They cover every county of every state, but they don't necessarily have an office in every county of every state, but they have assigned geographical areas. And so these folks are paid, not very much, I wasn't paid very much there, but they're paid, so they have employees full-time or part-time that are doing, frankly, a lot of similar work to what SCORE does, but the SCORE people are volunteers. So what's the relevance? Do these small business development centers run into people that are not credible enough to get funding? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, the SBDC works on, <coughs> excuse me, grant funding from the SBA, which I mentioned before, but they have certain metrics that they're focused on because it's a nonprofit, right? It's a governmental type of entity. So they're not out to make profit. That's not their goal but it is to hit certain metrics, such as helping clients raise capital, new businesses start, new employees hired by their clients and so forth. Well, do they run into people that have issues with their three C's that prevent them, prevent them meaning the clients from being successful? Absolutely. Do they have access to a resource like the credit and funding program? No. So what a wonderful opportunity to go to these different types of key influencers, educate them, and ask them for referrals. So the reason, and I realize there's a lot of overlap, but the reason I, I treated number two different than number one is what's in it for them. So anytime you're talking to someone about referrals, you want to first think about what's in it for them. I know what's in it for you. you you'll make a lot of money, but what's in it for them? Well, for, the, for number one, these are the individuals that are going to want to get the client back and facilitate the funding so they get their normal income stream. And that's why it's highlighted here. Influencers may not be quite the same because SCORE doesn't actually loan any money. The SBDC advisors don't loan money. Accountants don't loan the money. The consultants don't loan the money. I know the banker is a little bit of a mix. But the point is, these folks may want to have involvement, may want to take credit, which is fine, for the success, but they're not looking to necessarily facilitate the loan itself. And that's why I treated number one differently from number two. But the concept is quite the same. Hey, do you have any people that, that you're not able to get funding because they're not credible enough with their three Cs, credit collateral capacity? wow, we, we've got a great resource for that, we should talk. So that's number one, and that's number two. Any questions so far as we go through this? Now, let's say you just need a little bit simpler. So I, I'm hoping, I'm praying, I'm optimistic that this makes sense to everyone. But you might say, oh, Tom, that sounds like a little bit of work. Or, well, that's going to require me to get out of my comfort zone. I'm, I'm going to have to go interface with these people. A lot of times, if you're interfacing with this group, you can just do it telephonically and online. Often, if you're going to work with this group, you need to go get in front of them face to face. So you can't pull up in some shitbox car. You, you got to be dressed to the T. So if you're going to do this, I mean, you got to go out there and look and act sharp. Not suggesting that all of you don't, but you, you can't go out and look like you're struggling and, and pitch to number two. Number one, you're kind of hidden behind the internet and phone. So I guess you could be a bit more downtrodden and still pull that off. But if what we want to do is just simply buy leads, those same types of leads we can. And there's different sources and we don't sell leads. But for example, you can go to SynergyDirectSolution.com and they have a, a, a group focused on what bank loan turn down leads this isn't my website i didn't make this up this is off of their website so number three kind of circumvents the work involved with number one or number two 
So could you do one and two and not three? Could you do three and not one and two? Could you mix and match these strategies? Of course. But I wanted you to be aware that you could just go buy those leads. Now, is a purchase lead as powerful as a lead from these other groups? No, no. When you're getting a warm referral, a warm handoff from one or two, your chance of closing is very, very high. When you're down to this group, you're probably at about a 50-50 chance of closing up. Now, the fourth and final element of, of our four strategies to fill your sales funnel is, is certainly overlapping. Now, this is an advanced concept that I think most of you will not be interested in doing, but I feel like it, I'd be remiss to not communicate it to you because I absolutely know that it works and it feeds the rest of these. So if you, it's kind of like good, better, and best, right? So you don't have to be best to make good income and help people. But if you wanted to raise the bar to the highest level, number four would be part of your strategy. So let me describe it. Number four is having in-person financial literacy in your community held every week, once a week, in person in your community. It's consistently held. It's the same time of the day, the same day of the week, every week. So it's the at, at 7 p.m. local time every Tuesday, or it's 10 a.m. every Saturday morning, uh, or, or you follow the, the trend. So if you were to do this, where you are essentially putting the flag in the sand and saying, I am a resource for individuals who are not credible enough to get funding that need help, then you're generating the visibility and accessibility. And then you can leverage, better leverage, numbers one, two, and three. So do you have to do number four to do one, two, and three, one, two, or three? Absolutely not. Absolutely. <laughs> if I can spit it out, absolutely not. But I'll give you just real life examples. So I went to a co-working space and the co-working space had a really nice conference room with the AV equipment. And I said, I'd like to have regular, consistent, we did on Tuesday evenings, regular, consistent financial literacy workshops. Now I forewarn you, I'm gonna do the same workshop every time. It's not different topics, but it's about accessing capital. I like to offer it here in your room. I'd like you to give me the room for free and I'd like you to promote it. I'd like you to promote it to your current members, the people that are paying for the co-working space. And I'd also like you to promote it out to your prospect pool because they see value in, in getting prospective clients to walk into their, their facility. And we did it. And so then once I started doing that, then it, it created my flag in the sand. Guess what happened then? I could go to banks, and, and I, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not saying you have to do it this way, or you should even do it this way. But I would go to bank presidents, not like the president of Chase Bank globally, nothing like that, but the, the local, who, whomever is in charge of the local bank branch. I would go to them. And I'd say, hey, do you ever have clients that are turned out that can't get approved? We have a free financial literacy workshop we hold, for example, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. over at ABC co-working space. You might want to consider uh, using this as a resource for your people that are turned down. Guess what happens first? The freaking president of the bank comes and shows up at your workshop. Because he or she wants to sniff it out first. But that's great because the workshop's powerful. It's good. It's not a sales pitch. We don't ask anyone to buy anything. It's good, good information. Then they are much often much more comfortable, especially at the bank level, in sending people to a workshop than they are sending to you for the credit and funding program. So it adds an extra step but it better allows you to create a referral flow from some of these key influencers in your community. All right, so let's summarize, answer any questions, and then wrap it up. 
What we covered today is an interesting contrarian strategy of focusing on turndowns. We discussed on step one, you need to be crystal clear on what it is that we, you and I, what it is we do, how we fit into the, the, the ecosystem of small businesses and finance. Secondly, you need to be really clear on who our target audience is. We're looking for imperfect people. Can we help perfect people? Of course, but that's not going to be the majority. When you go ask a local, uh, go ask a local MCA, Merchant Cash Advance Broker, hey, do you know anyone with shitty credit that's looking for funding? They might laugh a little bit, but they're going to be like, yeah, I get some of those. Well, great. That's who we're looking for. Or you go to a loan broker. Hey, do you know anyone that's broke that's looking for funding that you weren't able to help? Because we can help, guaranteed. So the second step is to be clear on who our audience is. We're looking for imperfect people and help them improve their credibility so they get funding. And then on step three, we spent time talking about four different strategies that are somewhat related and, and even possibly overlapping to fill your funnel getting turned down referrals, approaching key influencers, buying turned down leads, and using education to create credibility and legitimacy and accessibility in your area. So who has questions about what we've covered today? We've got some big hitters on today. Alfred's back on. We haven't seen you in a while. Alfred, welcome back. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, uh, you're, you're probably going to be our, our uh, pace setter for this month in, in March. Uh, Terrence, CPA out of Illinois, good to see you. Tony Stevenson, big player out of South Carolina. Who, who has questions? Who has questions, comments, concerns on what we've covered today? Anyone want to call BS on any of it? It's okay. We can have that dialogue. But this is what will work. This is what's going to allow anyone to be an affiliate or a white label partner to be able to go out and help people and earn an adult income using some combination of these four. Do you have to do these things? No. Do you have to do all four of them if you do any of them? Of course not. But my job is to bring you best practices, what works. Take Alfred. Alfred doesn't earn $100,000 a month because he just sits around thinking about making money. Alfred is an implementer. Alfred makes things happen. And if you want to be like Alfred, be like Mike, you need to have a plan and we need to execute that plan. So I'm sharing with you what others have done that has proven to be successful. Again, if you have any questions, uh, nothing has changed here. You can email us, you can call us, you can text us. We're happy to help. Sorry I ran long, everyone. Have a great day and we'll see you back tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.